Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course uh, aspects of biochemical engineering in the last lecture i try to cover the immobilization of enzymes this will be continuation of that now you can remember in the last lecture i try to define what do you mean by immobilized enzyme actually immobilized enzyme <laughs> means you you confine the enzyme on the solid matrix that is call immobilize the enzyme and uh, it has several advantages advantages means you can reuse the enzyme again and again and stability of the enzyme will be increased to a great extent and uh, the purity of the product will be more in industry particularly it has lot of applications now question come that uh, i i try to discuss in the last lecture that in this immobilized enzyme system what are the different applications we have i told you it has application and particularly in the industrial sector uh, i can give the example of production of high fructose corn syrup this is produced uh, particularly this is used in the western country uh, in the confectionery industry Uh, how it is produced they they use the glucose they obtain from through the hydrolysis of starch present in the corn and then pass through the immobilized glucose isomerase enzyme and then glucose is converted to fructose and we know the fructose is 10 times sweeter as compared to the this is usually recommended for the diabetes patient not only that if you look at beer making industry one major problem with the beer making industry is the precipitation of protein because beer is considered as the energy rich drink because it contains lot of protein now and beer usually serve under chilled conditions and we know protein uh, if you heat it or cool it there is a the possibility of precipitation of protein now if there is a precipitation of protein then there will be haziness in the beer which is not acceptable so what uh, what uh, we can do we can we can have the immobilized uh, protease enzyme proteolytic enzyme column and pass the enzyme through plus the beer solution through this so that protein present in the beer can be disintegrated into the smaller protein molecules which cannot be precipitated as in at a low temperature and we can get chill proof beer now divided into two different classes one is called porous and non porous solid matrix now in case of porous we have more surface area and if more surface area is there there possibility of more immobilization of more enzymes and if more enzymes are immobilized then we can expect more substrate conversion so we can expect more product formation am i right and there is so question come what should be the characteristics of the solid matrix so this we discussed in the last lecture now this lecture i shall concentrate mostly on the methods techniques of immobilization technique what are the different techniques now if you look at the first slide it it gives the clear that you know that that do uh, that uh, classification of the immobilization method so this immobilization method can be divided into 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 two different way one is called insoluble enzymes another is called soluble enzymes now in case of insoluble enzymes it can be in the immobilization can be done in two ways one by binding another by entrapping now binding means what binding means suppose this is the solid matrix and your enzyme is there so this is bind you are on the on the on the solid and entrapping means what entrapping means suppose there is a gel inside the gel your enzyme are entrapped 
like this. There is a fiber, you know, there we have fiber like this and inside the fiber, the enzymes are immobilized. So that is called entrapping. So this, so if you look at the bindings, we have different types. One is cross-linking, another carrier binding. So this carrier binding again divided into four different class. One is physical adsorption. Physical adsorption is a very simple technique and cost involvement in this process is quite less. Ionic binding is through the electrostatic force of attraction can be done. And another is metal binding and covalent binding. Entrapping, we have gel entrapping. I, ha I just showed you gel entrapping, then fiber entrapping and micro encapsulation. Micro encapsulation, we know the envelope. Inside the envelope, the enzymes are immobilized. Then we call it micro encapsulation. Very small, uh, that capsule, we can put it. We, we, I can give the example of uh, that capsule that we use as the medicine, that you know, uh, how the medicine is put inside the capsule. Similarly, enzymes we can put inside the capsule. Now, in case of soluble enzymes, the immobilization can be done in two ways. One is called ultrafiltration, and this hollow fiber, hollow fiber device. So uh, this is uh, this is ultrafiltration means it is uh, it is the membrane size will be very small, so that the enzymes they adhere on the surface of the of the solid matrix. Now matrix entrapment. Now, when you talk about the matrix entrapment, the enzyme solution is mixed with polymetric fluid and then solidified into various forms depending on the applications. Uh, then uh, I, can, I can give the example that uh, calcium alginate because uh, we know that sodium alginate solution uh, here inside the sodium alginate solution we can put some enzymes and then when you put a drop by drop on the calcium chloride solution, we will be having beat formations that is calcium alginate. So, your enzyme will be entrapped inside the bit. Now, polymetric material or semi permeable and large molecular weight enzymes cannot be diffused out, but smaller substance and product can be can be can can diffuse in or diffuse out. Matrix entrapment, we have calcium alginate, agar, kappa carrageenan, then polyacrylamide and collagen. Now, this is the, this is the kind of example of matrix entrapment that I showed you. This is the matrix. You can see this is the, this is the matrix and inside the matrix have enzymes they are they are entrapped this is this is clearly this is you, uh, this is uh, visible now <coughs> there are method of entrapment so is uh, infusion in the gel one is infusion in the gel enzymes are entrapped inside the gel inclusion in the fiber inclusion in the microcapsule i i hope i have explained that i don't like to spend more time here Now, membrane entrapment, I, I talk about uh, that particularly in case of soluble enzyme, there is a hollow fiber unit have been used to entrap the enzyme solution between the thin and semi permeable membrane. So, you can see here the hollow fiber, you know this is the hollow fiber, very small fiber and inside this fiber the enzymes are entrapped. So, uh, uh, the, this is the membrane material, maybe lylon, cellulose, poly, uh, sulfone and polyacrylate. The acrylate is a different type of membranes we can use. Now, micro encapsulation, this type of immobilization that, uh, that enclose the enzymes in a membrane capsule. The capsule should be made of semi permeable membrane like nitrocellulose or lylon. In this method, the effectiveness depends upon the stability of the enzyme inside the capsule. So, you know that, so your capsule, when you, when you inside the enzymes, uh, that you know, 
that now this capsule that envelope should be stable if it is now stable then it is break then enzyme it comes out or you know it disintegrate the enzyme so stability uh, 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 the effectiveness of this uh, the, this capsule is very important now this is same i what i have shown here this is pictorially how it can be shown like this now what are the advantage and disadvantages of this entrapment technique advantage first is advantage is that that it is a highly soluble stable because since it is inside this this you know that if you pass the liquid here that it is not going to going to affect the enzyme much only the substrate will diffuse and reacts with the enzyme and product will form product will comes out the substrate will go in and products will comes out is the handling it is you can because in uh, i was in iit delhi and uh, one of my uh, research colleague he was working on uh, immobilized glucose isomerase enzyme and he he used the collagen membrane the inside the collagen membrane suppose collagen membrane is a is a membrane so this we can make it in the form of bag we can fold it and then with the help of heat we can seal it and then on one end we can put the dry powder of enzyme and seal it again and like this we have different bag and we can suppose this is the column and of the reactor in the bag we can put it here one after another and we can pack the column and then you pass your substrate here and get the product in other end so easy to handle no chemical modification is required because no interaction between the solid matrix and the enzyme but disadvantage is that enzyme deactivation may be possible due to <coughs> due to maybe your matrix has uh, some kind of uh, some kind of material which which affects the active site then deactivation will take place enzyme leakage through the pores if the pore size of the uh, capsule is more then enzyme may percolate out from the system now adsorption technique that you know this technique largely used by the industry and is the most simplest method of doing this because what we do you pack the solid matrix in the in the in the column and we pass the enzyme solution i can give a very simple example here suppose this is a solid, this is a column and inside this column we have any kind of solid matrix we can put it we can as for example i uh, <coughs> we can use uh, any uh, we can use uh, a coconut coir coconut coir is a fine fiber so we can pack the column why we use coconut coir because it has more lot of surface area so more surface area more will be the immobilization of enzyme now what we do we prepared the enzyme suspension solution this is enzyme solution am i right now this enzyme solution with the help of pump we pass it through this and we recycle back to the system so we we just recycle this and time to time we draw the sample and find out the activity of the enzymes now when the activity of the enzymes is constant then you assume the your column is saturated with enzyme and then you keep it in the buffer for some time and then you pass your start you replace the, with your substrate and and put your substrate here and then you can take out product here very simple very easy to operate this system so here the this is the physical phenomena because because here suppose this is the solid matrix so enzymes just the adhere on the surface of the enzyme just adhere you know it touches the surface and and the interaction between the solid surface and enzyme is due to weak van der waals type of force so if if suppose if we pass the liquid at the very high flow rate then it will be having some kind of shear force and with the shear force there is the every possibility can the enzyme may dislodge from the surface of the solid matrix so that is the one problem the attachment of the enzyme on the surface support is the weak by weak van der waals type of force active side now when we do this kind of immobilization one thing we shall have to take into account 
the active site of the enzyme should not should not adhere with the solid surface. Now, if it is the other way, suppose this is and your active site is like this, then your substrate cannot interact with the with the enzyme. So, you know that uh, that is not desirable. So, that we shall have to take care that when you do the in immobilization, the inactive site of the enzyme should take part for the immobilization of the enzyme. <clears throat> now, desorption of the enzyme is the common problem as I mentioned and solid support material like alumina, silica, porous glass, ceramics and diatomic as clay, bentonite and organic material like DAE, cellulose, starch, activated carb. So, different type of solid matrix can be used for the uh, immobilization part but through the absorption techniques. Now, this is how, <laughs> how it uh, uh, adhered on the surface of the solid matrix. This is the solid matrix and just enzyme simple adhered on the surface of the solid matrix. Now, the, the advantage of this process is that it is very simple and economic, limited loss of enzymes and reversible process. And that you know here that uh, here the reversible process means you dislodge the enzyme again you can add uh, you can immobilize the enzyme on the solid surface. Now, in the weak bonding this is the major disadvantage the low surface area for the binding because usually that you know that usually that uh, we use the the external surface for the immobilization of the enzymes. So, it depends on the how much surface is available and sensitive to pH ionic strength of the reaction solution and temperature. Next is covalent binding. Now, covalent binding is considered as the strongest binding between the suppose this is this is solid matrix and this is the enzyme. Now, this bonding and we call this covalent bonding. How the covalent bonding take place? It is the kind of sharing of the electron. The one electron from the solid matrix, one electron from the uh, enzyme, they are sharing with each other and then they form the bond and this is very strongest bond. So, you know that, so retention of the enzymes on the support covalent bond formation between the functional group of the enzyme and those of the support surface. So, this is, uh, I can give the example of CMC cellulose, carboxymethyl cellulose that is largely used for immobilization purpose. Now, here that functional group may be amino group, may be carboxylic acid group, may be hydroxyl group, may be uh, sulfur hydryl groups. This functional group must not must not be in the active site. So, as I as I this thing uh, as I mentioned in case of adsorption phenomena that your active site should not take part for the development of covalent binding. Now, this is the one example that I have given here that uh, I think it will be very clear. This is the solid matrix and this is the protein how protein this is protein nothing but protein the enzyme nothing but protein molecules and this is how adhered on the surface uh, on the covalent binds with the solid matrix this has been shown here. This is the functional group support material usually activated by using the chemical reagent sizes such as cyanogen bromide and <coughs> carbodiimide and glutaraldehyde. Now, one disadvantage of this process that when you use any kind of covalent bonding, we use lot of chemicals. And due to use of a lot of chemicals, there is every possibility the enzymes will lose its activity. This is the this is the one major drawback we have as far well the covalent binding is concerned. So this is this is kind of example that this is this is the bond covalent bond I, I showed you before also and uh, this is the chemical reaction this uh, let me explain that one or two this is the carboxylic acid group am I right in presence of this uh, methyl alcohol and this hydrochloric acid the uh, the methyl group will be attached and this is hydrazine uh, hydrazine this uh, when it reacts the hydrazide formation is there this is called hydrazide. Now, this when undergo the diazo reaction is it, it gone the, the 
azo group what is acid azide this acid azide when it reacts with the amino group of protein it forms the co uh, co nh that into protein so this is the how how they can covalently bind with the solid matrix now you can see how many steps are there you start with methyl alcohol hcl then hydrazine then you have sodium uh, nitrite then ph you have to maintain 8 to 9 so there so many different steps are involved for this covalent binding process so uh, what are the advantage and disadvantage they are highly stable no leakage and a wide range of carrier matrix are available now this process are very costly and complicated low enzyme activity why low enzyme activity because during the immobilization the loss of activity of the enzyme will take place and high risk of modification of the active site the, the, because since you were you are adding lot of chemicals there is every possibility of the modification of the active sites now cross linking another very interesting technique what do you call cross linking cross linking means suppose this is uh, this is like this this is the enzyme that you know that uh, this is cross link with other enzyme this is the other enzyme like this you can you can see that how they are cross linking so i can i can i can explain like this i think your conception will be a little bit clear that uh, suppose this is the enzyme am, am i right and this is another enzyme this is another enzyme this is another enzyme like this so this is like this they cross link with each other so we use some kind of cross linking agent which hold the enzyme together the, the this enzyme holding this enzyme and in this and this enzyme holding this enzyme and in this. so this is called cross link now in the inside if you put some kind of solid matrix then what will happen this will be embedded on the surface of the solid matrix so this is no interaction with the solid matrix but you know that enzymes through cross linking they can have this is very strong this is the force this is also covalent binding but the report that you know enzyme to enzyme binding also covalent binding so it is also a strong binding but they they are not no interaction with the solid matrix like covalent binding the cross linking they the the covalent linking between the enzyme and enzyme now let us uh, let me tell you that uh, um, this cross linking that uh, in this method that immobilization enzymes are directly linked with covalent bond between the various group of poly functional agent and what is the poly functional agent here this is the glutaraldehyde now what is the formula of glutaraldehyde cho ch2 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 ch so we have two ch cho group am i right Do, so this will bind with this will form compound with amino am, amino groups of amino acids here amino group of amino acids so they are how they are holding the enzyme together now unlike other methods no matrix or support involved in this method because so it may be, may be done in presence of matrix it may not be may be done without uh, pre, pre, the presence of matrix the polyfunctional reagents are the glutaraldehyde and di azonium salt and cheap but not often used for the pure enzymes now if you look at uh, the advantage and disadvantage of this process there is no leakage highest uh, stability strong bound and no hindrance to the active sites now here disadvantage is uh, complicated and expensive and changes of active site and modification so these are the different problem that we face with the cross linking now this is a very interesting table now this table they tell us that uh, how you select the immobilization technique for the, your particular enzymes now one thing i want to stress here that all immobilization technique is not suitable for all enzymes so you have to you have to select the enzymes we select the uh, immobilization technique on the on the basis of your requirement i because this table if you look at this uh, that uh, the, we have uh, on the basis of certain 
characteristics what actually we are uh, looking for. As for example, suppose the preparation. So, the first point is the preparation. What do you mean by preparation? Preparation we mean that uh, that you know that uh, whether the methods of preparation is easy, what you are looking for or it, it should be difficult. If you are simple, then it is easily. So, if you if one of the criteria for immobilize, choosing the immobilization technique is that the preparation technique should be simple, then we should go for adsorption technique. This is the simple. But when you go for uh, covalent or entrapment, it is very difficult or membrane confinement, it is, uh, will be comparatively simple. But now, if you, if you look at the cost, cost in case of adsorption, it will be low and covalent will be high, entrapment will be moderate and membrane confinement will be high. So, because if your cost criteria is more, then obviously you go for adsorption technique because your monetary involvement is less. Now, binding force, the, will, you, will you want the strong binding between the solid matrix and the enzyme? Now, if you want solid strong bindings, then you should go for covalent binding and membrane confinement. But uh, this is the adsorption, binding force will be very weak and this is also, this is variable or it will be very weak. Now, enzyme leakage, the what, what, what you want that enzyme leakage should be uh, no leakage of the enzyme or you, you can prefer the leakage of the enzyme is permissible in your system. Now, if you want that there should not be any leakage in your system, then you go for covalent uh, the technique because covalent and membrane uh, confinement technique. Otherwise, adsorption technique and interpreting there is every possibility of leakage. Applicability. Applicability means uh, how, how widely it is applied. Now, adsorption widely it is applied. Uh, then, <coughs> covalent binding is very selective. Particularly, this is used in case of the preparation of some biosensor, and uh, and this is the entrapment also widely used, and uh, and membrane confinement is very widely used. Running problem during the operation of the process that what is the characteristics of the that immobilization techniques that that is the running problem will be high, low, high or high. If you want that running problem should be as low as possible, we should go for co covalent binding techniques. Now, matrix effect that uh, that uh, whether this process is going to affect the matrix that here is the yes. Here is the yes, in you know, covalent bonding is the yes, entrapment yes, but in case of membrane confinement, no. So, now large diffusion barrier. Now, in case of adsorption, no diffusion and barrier, the covalent binding, no diffusion barrier because you, <coughs> your enzymes is there and it is outside. So, your substrate can easily interact with the enzyme. But in case of entrapment, we have some diffusion barrier and membrane entrapment, they inside. So, you know, there will be every possibility that less diffusion of the substrate or less diffusion of out of the product that will take place. Microbial protection, if you look at, now in case of adsorption, no microbial protection because in case of adsorption, the outside the solid matrix, the enzymes are immobilized, there is no protection. In case of covalent also no protection, but entrapment, since it is inside, there is the protection for microbial attack and here also membrane confinement since it is inside the membrane there will be some kind of <coughs> the, uh, 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 protection for the microbial attack. So, you know it, it depends on the what you are looking for. On the basis of your requirement, you should choose the technique. Now, next point that is important, how you characterize the immobilized enzyme. Now, because we have it usually presented by the international unit and international unit is defined as that micromoles of substrate converted per minute per gram of immobilized enzyme. Now, activity of the immobilized enzyme is highly sensitive to initial substrate concentration, concentration of immobilized enzyme, temperature, pH, reaction time, hesitation or flow rate and physical dimension. One thing I, I mentioned in the last class also that, uh, that in case of immobilized system, suppose when you use the soluble enzyme, uh, when you immobilize, you immobilize on a solid matrix. So, naturally it will convert it into uh, 
solid uh, the heterogeneous mixture and since it is heterogeneous mixture solid liquid uh, mixture so when you put it in a liquid solution there is every possibility the solid will settle down at the bottom so there you should require some kind of hesitation so the substrate can freely interact with the enzyme and keep the product Now bound enzyme, this is bound enzymes is very simple that how much of protein is bound on the solid matrix. This is usually expressed as milligram of, this is usually expressed as milligram of protein per gram of solid matrix. Now uh, specific activity of the bound enzyme protein can be expressed as micromole of substrate converted per minute per milligram of bound protein this uh, it provides some idea the effectiveness of immunization procedure so you know that uh, so this is how we can find out the activity of the immobilized enzyme now finally i want to tell you uh, that immobilized system there is a uh, one thing that is called coupling yield or you know, coupling efficiency what do you mean by coupling efficiency the overall here you see the overall activity of the immobilized enzyme and overall activity of the initial enzyme solution present so what i showed you suppose that this is this is the solid matrix am i right now you this is this is here you put the solid matrix here you have enzyme solution so you know initially you know the enzyme activity now with the help of pump you pass your solution like this and you recycle back like this so a time will come your, your your column will be totally saturated with the enzyme then this activity will be constant let us assume this is the activity is e1 so how much enzyme is absorbed in the system e1 e0 minus e1 am i right so this is like this the overall activity immobilized so how much enzyme immobilized e0 minus e1 how much initially it is present e0 so that ratio is called coupling yield so this is how we can easily find out so uh, in this uh, particular uh, lecture i try to discuss different immobilization techniques and uh, and uh, there are uh, different like you know we have uh, uh, with the immobilization technique can be divided into two types the different types of immobilization techniques we have come across and uh, and this selection is on the basis of the what what kind of enzyme you are handling the soluble enzyme or insoluble enzyme so on the basis of that we have given the classification of the immobilization technique now what we have discussed that uh, what do you mean by adsorption technique what do you mean by covalent immobilization technique what do you mean by cross linking technique and uh, what do you mean by membrane entrapment and hollow fiber entrapment all this technique we try to discuss now question come when you come to uh, any kind of uh, immobilization which technique will be suitable for a particular enzyme then you have to first you have to find out the criteria what we are looking for is easy preparation your binding force should be strong or you can reuse the enzyme again and again you want the microbial protection of the enzyme so on the basis of that you have you can select what enzyme uh, the, the enzyme uh, immobilization technique you should use and finally i i try to discuss the how you can express the activity of the immobilized enzyme both with respect to the solid matrix with respect to the bound protein and and also i try i explain what do you mean by coupling efficiency of the immobilization system thank you very much